What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. In today's episode, I've got something pretty sweet planned for you all. And that's how to grow your own sweet potato slips right at home. Now, if you're like me, I used to go to the grocery store and, uh, and buy sweet potatoes like this and I'd wanna grow them. And when I found out that you could grow them at home, it was really fun to do. The only downside was there was very few places that sold the sweet potato plants. And the places that did sell them, they were really expensive. I'd buy them online. They'd come, you know, a couple, couple plants in a little cluster. Those plants are called slips. And those, that little cluster might cost me $10, $20 for that little cluster of plants that might grow five to 10 pounds of sweet potatoes. So at that point, it was almost more expensive to buy them online. And you just kind of had the, the fun and the self gratification of growing them. But it was basically the same cost as just buying them from the grocery store. That was until I found out that you could actually grow your own sweet potatoes from store-bought sweet potatoes. And that's what we're gonna show you guys today. It's super simple. So with that being said, let's go. All right, so obviously the first thing you're going to need are some sweet potatoes. Now you can't just run off to the grocery store and buy any sweet potato because if it's conventionally grown, it will have been sprayed with a sprout inhibitor. Now potatoes will sprout eyes and sweet potatoes will sprout what's called slips. And farmers don't want either of those happening at the store because the grocery store uh, basically needs them to sit there long enough for you to buy them. And if they start sprouting eyes or slips, you're not gonna buy them. And so uh, conventionally grown sweet potatoes and potatoes will have been sprayed. You don't wanna grab those because they won't actually perform as well as organic because organic has not been sprayed with the sprout inhibitor. And so these will basically uh, behave as they should once you get them uh, in the right conditions. And so grab yourself some sweet potatoes, organic sweet potatoes. Now, these are gonna cost you a little bit more. These are, these are three pound bags. They cost me $5 a bag. So for these two big bags of sweet potatoes was about $10. But for that amount of money, go off and try to find sweet potato plants for $10. See how many you get. You might get three to five plants for $10, each one of these sweet potatoes is gonna produce four to five slips. That's four to five individual plants from each one of these sweet potatoes. So if I've got, I don't even know how many sweet potatoes I've gotten here, but let's say I had four sweet potatoes. Four sweet potatoes is 16 to 20 slips in, you know, on four plants on four potatoes. And so you're not gonna get anything close to that by buying it. This is by far the best way to grow a ton of slips and save a ton of money. The next thing you're going to need is a container to put them in. Now this container is gonna to have to store them for like six to eight weeks. So make sure it's something that is not gonna break down. You don't put it in like a cardboard box or something like that. But these Rubbermaid totes or these Rubbermaid wash bins work great. I got these from our local Dollar General for Sadly, like $1.50, <laughs> nothing's a dollar anymore. But I got these things from our dollar store. They're pretty heavy duty and they work great because they're nice and deep. Because ultimately when we fill it with soil, we need to fill it with enough soil that we can bury our sweet potatoes about three quarters of the way into the soil. And so these, these work awesome. Now, the final thing you're going to need is your soil. Now I went with just our standard sunshine mix number four. You could also supplement this with like pro mix or any other type of seed starting mix. Um, I just use this because this is what I have on hand, but it's really well draining. That's the first thing that's important. You want to be able to hold on to water, but not too much water. Excess water should drain through the, uh, through the medium so that these aren't sitting in water. They will rot if they're sitting in water. Again, they're going to be sitting that for like, you know, six to eight weeks. And so you want to make sure that they're not going to be sitting in like soggy wet soil. So something that's well draining, but something that's going to hold on to a good amount of moisture because if they dry out, as we'll talk about, they're not going to sprout slips at all. And so it's that fine line. So go with something high quality, like a, you know, a seed starting mix or a potting mix. Um, you can also use other things as well, as I'll talk about later in this episode, there's a few other things you can go with, but this is just what I'm going with for today. And then I guess the final thing you really need is time. Make sure that you do this early enough to where you're not gonna basically be, you know, kind of uh, racing the clock, if you will, because sweet potatoes, they're gonna take about six to eight weeks just to start sprouting. And then from that point, you have to take the sprouts and root the sprouts, the slips, so that they can grow roots and then you can put them in your garden. So this is like a six to 10 week process from beginning 
to transplanting out in the garden. So make sure you start them early enough so you have enough time. With that being said, let's get started. All right, so let's get started. It should not take too long because it's pretty simple. The first thing we did here is we just pre-moistened our seed starting mix so that it is not super dusty. And we're going to move about half of this over to the second bin here because there's no way I'm gonna have enough space once I get all the sweet potatoes in here for just one bin. So I made two bins worth of soil. And so that, I think that looks about, about right. So, all right, soil is in. Basically you just want enough soil, like I said, to bury the sweet potato about three quarters of the way, but also have about an inch or so of kind of wiggle room underneath as kind of a buffer zone below the sweet potato. And so that's kind of what we, what we went for. So that looks good. Now, the next thing you're gonna do is just simply take your sweet potatoes and stick them in the, uh, into the growing medium. Now you don't wanna stack your sweet potatoes. You don't want to like take your sweet potato, put soil on top, and then another sweet potato. You want to basically space your sweet potatoes out in a single layer, about every like half inch or so, just so there's enough room. They can be pretty crowded. I'll be honest, they can be pretty crowded, but they, they do need a little bit of space to kind of breathe. So we're kind of just wiggling them in here. And a common question people ask is, do I need to add any fertilizer to my sprouting medium? And the answer is no, you don't. And the reason why is because these sweet potatoes are basically a modified root. They're a tuber. And so the tubers store all of the energy that the future plant is going to need. And so this has all the nutrients, all of the energy that that future slip is going to need to grow with. So you don't need to fertilize this at all. When you'd add some fertilizer, as we'll talk about, is after the slip is growing and you detach the slip from the sweet potato. And that's only if you want to do that, which we'll talk about. It's an option, but it's, it is recommended. So we're gonna just wiggle these into the soil and I think we should be, should be good with that. There we go. So the next thing we're gonna, well, we're gonna get this second bin started up here, but the next thing that I thought I'd mention is just to make sure that these are in a dark location. Um, you don't wanna put these in a nice bright location until they start to sprout. They're going to do much better in darkness. So um, I don't have it with me right now, but we're gonna take just a seedling tray and put it over top. Um, I guess this could be a good example, but it's clear. But the one we're gonna put on top is gonna be black. And we're just going to put it on top that way it's gonna trap you know, all, that, all that darkness inside of this bin here, and they're gonna do much, much better. So uh, keep them dark. And then the other thing I was gonna to mention too is keep them moist. You gotta come in here, and again, you don't need to have this saturated, but for six to eight weeks, this is gonna be their home. And you don't want these to dry out. If the soil dries out, it's gonna to start to wick away moisture from the sweet potato, and you don't want sweet potato raisins. If they turn to raisins, they're not gonna sprout slips. So just come in here, give them a good mist, I'd say like every other day or so, every three days maybe. Just kinda of check the soil, you'll know if it's dry. And if it's dry, give it a little bit of water. If it's not, leave it alone, because you don't want too much water either. It's kind of a fine, delicate dance. With that being said, let's, let's uh, get this second bin started. Now, you know you're probably wondering, why can't I just take this sweet potato and throw it right in my garden? And the answer is, well, you could if you live in a really warm climate with a super long growing season. Here in Michigan, we have something called winter and we're still in it. But once we get out of winter and spring starts, we only have about 120 days of frost-free days to grow. And these sweet potatoes are gonna take 140 to 160 days to actually get fully mature and have sweet potatoes that we can harvest. And that's too many days for us to, you know, actually feasibly grow them here in Michigan. So what we need to do is we need to start them early. And that's all we're doing is we're just kind of getting them a head start. We're also, by planting the sweet potato in soil here and kind of propagating them indoors, is it's allowing us to grow the slips, multiple slips on a sweet potato. So if you threw this right out in your garden, if you lived in like Southern California that never receives winter, you're lucky by the way, but, um, but also you're gonna get like four to five plants all growing in the same location. It's not the worst thing in the world, but if you don't have enough space, it can get really crowded really fast. Typically you're gonna space your plants out about a foot apart. And so these are gonna be really crowded if you throw the entire sweet potato right in the ground. Again, you can, 
It's just it's advised to start them, you know, kind of indoors and split them out and separate them as well as start them early so you have enough time. Now, the next thing is why do you have to put them in like this? Why can't you do this or this? And the reason why is because, again, this is a root and the growth is going to, the slips are going to come out of either this end or this end. And you don't want to have it like that because if it's like that, what happens if the growth comes out of this end? Well, number one, the amount of moisture this can uptake if it's laying flat, it's coming in contact with the soil surface a whole lot more. So you have more, uh, more moisture uptake. It's going to dry out a lot less. But also, if, if you pick the unlucky end that the growth is going to come out of and you stick it in like this, you're going to smother all that new growth. So don't do that. It's not advised. So we're going to stick them in just like that. Another thing to note is temperature. So sweet potatoes, they are a tropical plant. They really like warm conditions. And so try to keep them around 65 to 70 degrees. I actually like to put these on a heat mat, believe it or not. Um, I'll put these on a heat mat, which will help the soil to kind of evaporate. So you're going to have to water it a little more frequently. But it'll keep the soil right around like 80 to 85 degrees, which is awesome for sweet potatoes. Um, now, uh, the other thing to note is humidity because obviously we just talked about temperature. Humidity is kind of plays in that same, in that same topic. Um, you know, temperature and humidity kind of go hand in hand. You want to keep these nice and humid as well. Again, they're kind of a tropical, uh, tropical plant. And so you need to keep them right around 40 to 50% humidity. If you're someone that heats your home with wood, or if you're in a very dry environment, you're going to need to make sure that you keep the humidity up. Again, by misting them regularly and keeping them in a damp, damp seed starting mix like this should really help. Um, but, uh, but you want to make sure that they don't dry out. And then the final thing that I thought I'd mention before you kind of set it and forget it for a couple weeks is you want to make sure that you uh, go with a seed starting mix that you want to go with. And that's what I really want to kind of end on is because a lot of people, they, they always, they say, well, Luke, you know, I follow, I follow everything you say like it's the law. And so I'm going to go out and I'm going to get the exact seed starting mix you're using and I'm going to follow everything, you know, textbook. You definitely can, but I don't ever like to spoon feed people. And so I want you to have this time to experiment. There's lots of soils that you can be propagating your sweet potatoes in. And I want to go through some of them because again, I want to give you the option to experiment and find what works best for you because what works best for me may not work best for you. And so this soil I find is terrific. But you can also go with something like damp sand. Damp sand is fantastic. You're just going to have to water it a little more frequently, but it is very sterile. It's very well draining. A lot of people will, will propagate things in sand. Um, things like vermiculite. You can use vermiculite as well. It's basically the same, has the same properties as this, only it's very sterile. It's very lightweight, holds on to moisture. A lot of people will propagate uh, things um, in, in vermiculite. You can also use sawdust. Now sawdust has the capability to hold on to too much moisture. So it is kind of a fringe. You got to be really careful, but a lot of people have had really good success with, uh, with um, sprouting their sweet potatoes in sawdust. Another thing is a combination of sawdust and sand. That way you have the moisture holding capabilities of the sawdust with the drain, you know, the, the drainage of sand. A lot of people will use that combination for even things like dahlia tubers. We've done that with great success with storing our stuff over winter for long periods of time in just a combination, a 50-50 mix of sand and sawdust. So there are lots of options that you can go with. Um, experiment. Find out what works best for you. I don't want to sit here and say, this is the law. You have to follow this you know, like, it's, like it's the only way because I don't think that that is, that is uh, how gardening should be. So um, have fun with it. That's the biggest thing. Um, but that being said, this is really it. The only thing you have to do, like I said, is just keep them covered, keep them damp, keep them in here for like six to eight weeks. Definitely start checking them after about four weeks-ish. I don't want to say that they're, you know, that they're for sure going to be sprouting at four weeks, but you do want to make sure you start checking them at kind of that four-week mark. Check them every other day or so, because once you see sprouts, the final thing you're going to have to do is give them some sunlight because once they sprout and they start forming leaves, that's when they're going to start growing. So up until that point, they can stay dark. They can stay, you know, just here and you don't have to worry about them too much. 
As soon as they start to sprout, you gotta throw them in a nice south-facing window or underneath the grow light or you know, directly outside in your garden if you can do so. Um, but that's for another video for another day. All right, and so the, one of the final things you're gonna have to do, and this is gonna come a lot later, we'll show you guys updates as these start growing, but you wanna detach the slips from the sweet potatoes. Now, I'm gonna have Taylor in post kind of throw up a couple pictures of a potato, a sweet potato with the slips still attached to the sweet potato. And then what you're going to do once those slips get about an inch and a half, two inches tall, you can let them get even a little bit taller than that. But I find that once they're about an inch and a half, two inches tall, they can be totally detached from the sweet potato itself. At that point, what you're going to do is you're gonna put them in a shallow tray of water for them to start rooting. And that way they can actually root independently of the sweet potato so that you have independent little plants you can put out into your garden. Again, like I said you know, earlier in this episode, if you just take the sweet potato with all those slips attached and throw it in your soil, you absolutely can do that. But definitely expect the plants to be slightly crowded. So this is gonna allow you to space them out accordingly, really maximize the amount of plants you have, as well as even you know, give some away to friends and family because you're gonna have a ton of extra plants. So uh, you're gonna basically put those slips in some water for a few weeks until you see sprouts. Again, I'll have Taylor throw that in post. <laughs> and we'll obviously bring you guys along for this process as these start sprouting so that you guys can kind of see when we're doing it and how we're doing it. But for those of you that, um, you know, that might get an earlier start than we have, it'll at least give you an idea of what you're looking for. Um, so make sure you do that. And once you see sprouts and it's warm enough to plant them outside, you're good to go. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. I really hope that this money saving tip helps you guys to not only save money, but also just have more fun in the garden and take more control over the food that you're growing. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. If you did, make sure to throw a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll catch you guys on the next episode. As always, this is Luke from the My Gardener channel reminding you to grow bigger. Take care, guys.